Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's YouTube video, I want to talk about the six deadly causes of chest pain. So the chief complaint of chest pain notoriously comes to the emergency department very often. And every time I see a patient that's complaining of chest pain, I like to rule out these six deadly causes. So let's get started. So the first chest pain I want to talk about is a chest pain that is worse with exertion. Um, it can be in the middle of the chest and maybe radiate down the left arm, maybe associated numbness and tingling in that left arm, um, associated shortness of breath, uh, maybe some nausea, vomiting, dizziness. Um, so we all know this one, coronary artery disease. So there's three different types of coronary artery disease that might present to the emergency department. Um, there's STEMIs, there's NSTEMIs, and then there's unstable angina. So STEMIs are ST elevated myocardial infarction. So you'll see those um, ST elevations on an EKG um, usually had associated uh, elevated troponins. And then reciprocal changes. So never forget that that's what uh, differentiates coronary artery disease from a couple other different things that show ST elevations on EKG. And then there's NSTEMI. So they won't have um, ST elevations on the EKG, but they may have some other EKG changes like T wave inversions, Q waves, and they will also have an um, elevated troponin. And then there's unstable angina, which is chest pain that is new, um, it is worsening, or it's chest pain at rest or unrelieved by nitro. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is a chest pain that is a sudden onset. It's a 10 out of 10 pain. It's tearing, ripping in nature. It's radiating to the back. These patients might have a past medical history of hypertension or a bicuspid aorta. Um, so this is aortic dissection. You definitely don't wanna miss this for chest pain. Um, these patients also might have unequal pulses in their upper extremities, or they might have unequal blood pressures in the upper extremities. Um, the chest x-ray findings of an aortic dissection will show a widened mediastinum. So you definitely don't wanna miss this. The initial treatment's going to be beta blockers to decrease the sharing forces on that dissected part of the aorta, and then you're gonna to wanna to call surgery immediately and get these patients up for immediate surgery. The next chest pain that you cannot miss in the emergency department will have muffled heart sounds on auscultation. They might have that bulging neck vein of JVD and or hypertension. Um, the patient may be complaining of chest pain, shortness of breath, and maybe some other heart failure type symptoms. And this is cardiac tamponade. Um, definitely consider this diagnosis in any type of penetrating chest wall. Um, or any patient in PEA. And you cannot miss this because usually these patients need emergent pericardiosynthesis or they just need to be admitted to cardiology to have this done. Um, on the EKG, the most common finding is tachycardia, but boards will like to test you on the electrical alternand, so that QRS going up and down, up and down, up and down, simulating the heart switching back and forth in the pericardial sac. Um, so that is another type of chest pain that you don't want to miss in the emergency department. So I like to separate the six deadly causes of chest pain into two that involve the heart, so it's coronary artery disease and then cardiac tamponade, and then one is stemming off from the heart, that's the aortic dissection, and then the next two I want to talk about are two that involve the lungs. So two involve the heart, um, one involves the aorta that is stemming off the heart, and then two involve the lung, and I'll get to the last one. So the next one I want to talk about is a pulmonary embolism. Um, and for these patients, I like to use the Wells and Perk criteria to rule out a pulmonary embolism. So Wells criteria involves um, any DVT-like um, symptoms, unilateral swelling, pain, um, any risk factors that involve immobilization, recent surgery, recent hospitalization, a heart rate greater than 100, any prior DVTs or blood clots, um, hemoptysis, or any recent malignancy. And then you can use the PERC criteria, which will have the addition of any females and O2 sat that is less than 94. Um, and then any oral contraceptive use. And I like to run through those risk factors with a lot of people coming in for chest pain, especially if it's pleuritic um, and they are complaining of associated shortness of breath, which is one of the most common symptoms with pulmonary embolism. 
and usually I'll put that in my chart Wells and Perk negative or Wells and Perk um, less than this so we didn't do this or it sounds more like cardiac chest pain or um, I might even grab a D-dimer on a patient if they qualify for it with their risk factors and story and rule it out that way. Or if it's the number one on my differential, I can even skip the D-dimer if their Wells criteria is greater than four and get that CTPE. So that is pulmonary embolism. So the next chest pain that I want to talk about is a patient coming in complaining of unilateral chest pain with associated shortness of breath. Um, they may even have that JVD that I was talking about before, those distended neck veins, and maybe some tracheal deviation. And this is a late sign of a tension pneumothorax. So you're going to want to consider this with anyone complaining of shortness of breath. Um, and you're gonna to wanna to get a chest x-ray first on these patients. On auscultation, they may have diminished breast rounds on one side of their chest, and the treatment for this is going to be immediate um, needle thoracostomy, so you're gonna to wanna to put a 14 gauge needle above the second intercostal space, um, mid-clavicular line to decompress that lung, and then immediately followed by a chest tube. So that is another chest pain patient that you're not gonna to wanna to miss in the emergency department. So we've talked about two chest pains that involve the heart, so that's coronary artery disease and cardiac tamponade. One that stems off from the heart, and that's the aorta. Two that involve the lung, that's tension, pneumothorax, and pulmonary embolism. And then the last one involves the esophagus. So esophageal ruptures or Borhave syndrome will come in, these patients will come in with the chief complaint of chest pain that immediately follows after profuse vomiting. So these patients will usually have the triad of chest pain, vomiting, and maybe some emphysema, um, subcutaneous emphysema in any part of their chest, meniastum, maybe in the cervical area. They may have Hammond's crunch, which is a crunching sound on palpitation in the chest wall. And you do not want to miss this as it can usually mean immediate surgery. So that is the last dangerous cause of chest pain in the emergency department. And that's it guys. Thanks for listening. Um, I just want to run through this because I had a long shift at the chest pain center the other day and it's easily to forget one of these deadly signs of chest pain and I like to go through my charting and talk about the differential diagnosis that I went through with each of my patients that are complaining of chest pain. And after I roll out the six deadly causes, maybe I can go on to say, oh, maybe you have heartburn or um, maybe you have costochondritis, um, some of the lesser causes of chest pain or just anxiety. Um, with my patients after I rule out the six deadly causes. So thanks for listening. See you next week.